Well, being married and having three children, no one ever told me. I was never trained for that, that uh, procedure. And I found that very, very difficult. Uh, and uh, I just couldn't really handle it at all. And I would go and work on tractors and plow all night rather than being, uh, uh, being a f husband and a father. I, I missed that. I didn't do that at all well. There was a big gap in my life that, uh, that didn't work. And I finished up on drugs, 26 pills a day, prescribed by the doctor. Because when I was angry and violent with my wife and my children, I sacked men working on tractors. If they put a bend in the furrow, I would tell them to go back and straighten it out or dig around an electric pylon. I was an absolute tyrant for 100% uh, efficiency and, and maximum output. And I put that pressure on my wife. Although my own, li my own life was a, a, an absolute mess. And you were still involved in church, you know, in chairman of what diocese in... Well, so I was lay chairman of 23 parishes and no one ever challenged me at all. I could preach in the cathedral and meet the Bishop of Norwich very regularly, have special meetings with him. And yet you still live this kind of double life, almost a Jekyll and Hyde. Double life, yeah. No one ever challenged me. Uh, and anyway, well, I, I use the expression that was like a veneer on a table. Uh, that looked absolutely lovely and you buy the furniture and that looks lovely you stand out in the rain for a little while and you soon see the veneer starts to lift up and that was what was happening my wife knew of course underneath the surface and eventually I was hospitalized in a mental hospital uh, and on these drugs and absolutely useless and uh, something must have happened what did it happen there or where did it happen this experience of uh, having a personal experience of Jesus Christ. Suddenly my Bible, my wife had bought me a Bible and it was laying on the floor and I was chairman of the World Plowing Match, I was chairman of the British Plowing Association, I was chairman of the NFU Machinery Committees and all sorts of things I did. On the surface, the veneer on the surface was quite respectable, but and I'm writing in a little book what I was doing with my life and my Bible was laying there and the pages were blowing over. And a big bee sat on one of the pages. And I just, but the pages blew over and the fly didn't fly away. And I thought that's rather strange. And I bent down, picked the Bible up, and the, the bee was sitting on that verse of scripture that said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that shook me. For 10 days I'd been thinking, well, I'm going to find out where this text comes from somewhere. And someone's got to give it to me. But there it was, the Lord. And I, and I was quite cold. I thought, well, God is in the Oh, I don't know, I can't understand this. The woman said, God would speak to you today if you listen. And I, I sh shrugged it off, like many people do. I, I thought, that's just a coincidence. Uh, but at the same time, I was listening oh, for 10 days about miracles. And I, I remember looking around to see if there's anyone listening to me. See if, oh. And I said, God, if that's you, if there's anything else you want to tell me, tell me now. And that's the first prayer I ever prayed to God. And another fly came along and sat on these pages, blowing over in the wind. And the fly sat down on the verse that said, You foolish man, in the Proverbs, if you plow not in the autumn, you will seek at harvest and not find. And I'd left my father plow in the fields and the bales of straw in it on my farm and suddenly there was a, a, a laser beam of God's conviction if you like that God of all the people there and all the people in the world God had given a provision for me personally knowing very well what my wife was mostly doing at home and what a terrible man I'd been throwing a concrete block through the window of the car my wife was driving so through a Jaguar, that was an expensive window, I remember that. But you know, there was such a, a consuming fire within me. And there's this God talking to me. Yes, there is me. Because I didn't play in the autumn. And a lot of people are like that. And that was a, per, a farmer story just for me. And I promised God right then, I said, God, whatever you tell me next to do, I'll do that. <laughs> I don't listen to the way God was talking to me. And a bee came and sat down on these pages, blowing about in the wind. And Jesus had trouble with his own disciples. I was a, I was a Christian, I suppose, because I weren't worshiping any foreign god. 
I was acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord. I believed he was God's son, but I'd never made a, a commitment. And the bi flip bi ca uh, bi B came and sat on the verse of the Bible that said, uh, I didn't come for healthy people. I didn't come for sinless people. Jesus said, I came for the sick, that they be healed. I came for sinners, that they be redeemed and set free. And that was me. I went to the local Lutheran father, Roman Catholic he was actually, father, and uh, he led me to the Lord. I asked God to forgive me for all my sins. I pulled all my pills down the drain, because if God says I'm healed, if this bee tells me that I'm healed, well then, all right, let's do something about it. So I tipped on me. I'm not telling anyone to do that. But that would happen to me. Tell me, uh, recently you're saying uh, of a healing that took place in, in one of the recent meetings you've been in. Well, yes, we see healing all the time. And um, uh, a man recently in a full gospel businessman's minna, dinner had neuron disease. And he was sitting right in the front of the Hilton Hotel and we were ministering and I couldn't look at this man because he weren't, he was just, he was a way off. And, and so I had, you have to look at one or two faces that are actually listening to you. Uh, and he was just embarrassing me a little sitting there with his walking stick. Uh, with his coat on in the Hilton Hotel, there's all us steaming away in the warmth and he was got his coat on. And, but he came forward for prayer and, uh, and he... Well, he said the sinner's prayer. And uh, like other, many other people were saved or made an indication or surrendered their life to the Lord as best they were able at that time. But what really hurt me was I watched this man go out the door, helped by two other people. And I was very conscious that I was not the same as Jesus. I was not the same as, uh, you know, many other international speakers and healers and... And I, I, I was really disappointed. I had not fasted 40 days like Jesus did before he healed anyone. Uh, I, I was conscious of being inadequate. Many, wonderful meeting. And, and we had a wonderful, we were ministering till after midnight. But uh, 10 days later, I get a telephone call uh, from uh, somebody who had been at the meeting. Good meeting, Tony. I said, yes, yeah. Well, he said, you prayed for me. I said, yeah, prayed for a lot of people. He said, well, I'm the man you held my stick up. You said that you held my stick up in front of everybody and said uh, this would be good to hang on my fence to remind me and my neighbours how bad I used to be. Uh, and I thought, well, that's that man that two people were helping out of the room at midnight. He said, I threw both my sticks away that night. He said, my wife, a headmistress, was asleep upstairs in our house. He said, I run up the steps. I run up the stairs. He said, I jumped up and down. I danced around the bed. He said, I'm ringing you up to ask you what the next step is for my life. No, that's a miracle, nothing to do with me, all to do with the grace of God and the power of the written word of God professed. Jesus says we, our tongue shall be like a, a rudder of a ship. We can speak death or life. You don't know Jesus? Well, my testimony is, could be your testimony. We're married, our marriage is fun, we're, we're having a wonderful life, we do television programs, and take conventions and crusades. The anointing of God's Holy Spirit. If you've got dirty hands, if you're conscious, and you will be, you'll say, well, I don't deserve it. You'll say, my life, my marriage, my, my, the things that I've done in the past have left some ink fingerprints on my life. You'll say that. I thought that. I thought I could never measure up to what the Bible used as an example. To be a Christian means to be like Christ. And you think, I could never be like that. But God's speaking to you right now today, and he's saying, you, there is a wonderful opportunity for you to make a decision for Jesus just to say Lord I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of the fingerprints on my life the, the, the blocks in my, the blots in my copybook the things I've done wrong the things that I would never do in front of my grandchildren you, you're aware of these things and the Lord is saying give them to me surrender that part of your life to me and God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, the resurrection power of Christ, shall transform your life. And you'll be born again. I was born again.